Hey everyone, we're back in the red, Redneck Coach Workshop, uh, catching up on a few little projects, uh, get back to the grind here, getting stuff built, and uh, going from there. So, uh, really glad that the, uh, the Fargo is pretty much done. The only issue we have left is uh, that Dakota Digital uh, Speedometer Driver. Uh, it's a well-built unit and everything, but their programming absolutely sucks. I've spent about three hours on it. Uh, Darcy's wife spent an hour, and we had another friend come who's really good with computers, and he spent two or three hours on it. Cannot get that thing programmed to work. So uh, Dakota Digital has no tech on um, tech support on the weekends, so we're pretty much screwed. So uh, we spent 35 bucks, bought a little. GPS speedometer from Walmart and that's going to tide them over until uh, we can get that one figured out or uh, throw it back to them and uh, go from there. So just show you what I'm working on. Uh, I kind of screwed up. I said we were working on an MG. Uh, it's actually a little uh, Austin sports car. It's got a tilt front end and I had uh, the fellow from the museum bring the hood in for me because it would be easier than running back and forth trying to fit this thing. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a pain in the butt, but uh, I got a good start on it. So in a previous video I had showed how I bead roll, I cut out and bead rolled uh, this piece that we're going to use for the, the chrome outline on the grill. It's held in by a whole bunch of bolts. Uh, some of them were totally unaccessible from the backside and caused uh, uh, Keith a whole bunch of grief trying to get the, the old lead one off. So uh, I have welded in two bolts. What I'm using is some uh, uh, black anodized uh, 440 model aircraft bolts. I welded two in there. I've got this side is fit really well. It's fit from here all the way around and all the way down to here. There's four more bolts I have to weld in, and what I'm doing is I'm marking them from the backside with the drill, just putting a little dimple, and then I'm using, uh, bringing it over to the bench and welding them in with the MIG welder on the backside. Uh, I was going to drill a hole and plug weld them from this side, but it's just, you don't get a good enough weld without really warping and distorting this face piece, and it's going to have enough work on it. So. So I'm going to put four bolts in this side. Uh, I did get some distortion here. You can see it kind of goes up. So what I'm going to do is once this is all bolted down, I'm going to cut this about here and I'm going to manipulate this. And if I have to cut a little bit out, I will. And then I'll join them back together, weld them up, put the rest of the mount bolts in. Then I can take it out, massage it, sand it, and it'll be ready to go to the chrome shop. Once I get going here, I'll show you the process I'm going to do for uh, welding on the mounting bolts and everything and uh, get this one wrapped up. And next to it, I've got the back end off a 35 Chevy, I believe it's a four-door sedan. Uh, I've been pounding dents out on the back, it had quite a few of them. I've got some rust repair and stress cracks I've got to fix down here on the bottom as well as some rust that runs around the top of this wheel well here. So uh, once I get into that, I'll kind of show you the process I'm doing to uh, make those new pieces and weld them in. So anyhow, guys, we'll be Okay, guys, we're back at it here. What I've got is I've got all the bolts uh, welded in all the way around. Uh, what do we got? Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven bolts. Uh, I've had to, as I bolt it in, I can only do one bolt at a time and I have to tweak it to get it to fit perfectly. Uh, and then I had to do a cut here because uh, that lead one that I made the pattern off was way out to lunch. So right here I've got a, a joint. I just have to trim this one back and then I can do a little bit of uh, manipulating here and get this last uh, joint tack together then I can take the whole thing off I'll finish welding this joint and the one I had to do down at the bottom and then I can uh, finish sand it grind all the uh, the welds and everything and it should be good to go so I'll bring you back here once I get this off of here 
Okay, so we've got the, the piece all welded together. I've got it all shaped. Uh, what I've done is I've used a 632 uh, hardened bolt that I've welded on two sides on the back side of the, uh, the ring. What I'm working on now is I'm just using uh, random orbit and uh, cleaning up the edges. Wherever I've got uh, machine marks from my bead roller, I'm using a, uh, a 120 flap disc on my die grinder just to, uh, to take a little bit more off a little faster. So It actually came out really smooth. It's not taking a lot of uh, sanding to get it down nice and smooth, so the uh, chroming shop should have a really easy time of polishing and, uh, and chroming this piece. So I'm not gonna bore you with sanding and all of this little detail work here, but once I've got it uh, cleaned up and uh, bolted on the hood here, I'll show you what we got. Here's the finished product, guys. It dressed up pretty nice. I think it should chrome pretty good. Anyhow, that's, uh, that's the Austin sports car. Not sure what year it is. Uh, hope I'm not stepping on Tweed's garage too much by working on a British car but this will probably be the last one I work on because I don't work on too many of this British stuff so anyhow guys thanks for tuning in just a short little project on the uh, at uh, Red, Redneck Coachworks garage uh, next I'll be working on the 35 Chevy and I'll just uh, show you the process I'm going to go through on the rust and crack repair on that so Anyhow guys, take care. Thanks for subscribing. We'll catch you on the next one.